Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. In this video, we're going to learn the second subtopic for 5.0 states of matter called liquid covering the properties of liquid. There are five physical properties of liquid we are going to learn in this subtopic. First, shape and volume of liquid conforms to the shape of container. Second, surface tension which indicates the volume of a liquid is limited by the surface they have. Third one is viscosity, which tells us the ability for a liquid to flow is moderate. And then compressibility, since the shape and volume depending on the shape of container means liquid is only slightly compressible. And lastly, the diffusion rate, where molecules manage to slide past one another freely. In terms of shape and volume, liquid has a definite volume but indefinite shape. In other words, the volume of a liquid depends on the shape of container. The particles of a liquid are closely spaced, so their motion is still random but much more limited. The particles slip past and collide with the neighboring particles, hence they are held by the intermolecular forces. Surface tension is the energy required to increase surface area by a unit area. To understand this term, we might need to think of a few examples like drops of water, insects walking on water, or paper clip float on water. This phenomenon held up surface tension. Surface tension is caused by the difference in intermolecular forces experienced by the molecules in the interior and the one experienced by the molecules at the surface of a liquid. Let's look at the mechanism of water droplets. When using a water dropper, the water does not flow in continuous stream but rather in a series of drops. The shape of the drop is caused by the surface tension of the water. The only reason the drop of water isn't completely spherical is that the force of gravity is pulling down on it. Molecules in the interior are surrounded and are pulled equally in all directions, while molecules at the surface feel attractive forces from below and sideways and thus pulled in the towards liquid. Therefore, a liquid surface tends to have the smallest possible area. To increase the surface area, water molecules must move to the surface by breaking some attractions in the interior which requires energy, in other words, the tension, and cause the surface tightened like an elastic film. So the stronger the forces are between molecules in a liquid, the greater the surface tension. Viscosity means ability for a liquid to move. Imagine how water ran fast and easy, while honey flows thick and slow. There are three factors that will affect liquid's viscosity. First, the size and shape of molecule. Having small and spherical molecule means particles are easy to flow. Smaller particles interact with one another forms weaker intermolecular forces as compared to larger size particle. On top of that, if temperature is kept warm, the particles will move faster means more space they need to move around. All three criteria will lead to the conclusions of decreasing viscosity of a liquid. If we need to choose a liquid that has low viscosity out of the two examples before, the water and honey, water is the one with low viscosity. In terms of compressibility, we need to consider when we are about to apply more pressure on the particles. Since there are very little space between the molecules as discussed earlier, liquid can be compressed only slightly, not as much as in gas. Diffusion is the process in which molecules tend to disperse from areas of high concentrations to areas of low concentrations. The molecules in liquid are much closer together than those in gas. Their close proximity and the lack of available space makes it harder for them to disperse across an area and slows down their rate of diffusion. Other factors that affect their rate of diffusion could be thickness or viscosity. So, it could be said that thicker liquid tend to have a slower rate of diffusion than the thinner liquids. These are the two processes that tell us about the property of liquid, vaporizations and condensations. Vaporization is the process of converting a liquid into a gas. It is also called evaporation. Since we know that the particles of a liquid is moving slower than in gas, the liquid will have to be heated to a higher temperature so that the liquid can turn into gas. Once heat is added, the kinetic energy increases, hence the molecule will move faster. Then more molecule will possess sufficient kinetic energy to overcome the intermolecular forces between them. And lastly, they will escape the surface as vapor molecules. 
Condensation is the opposite to vaporization, the process by which a gas phase is changed into liquid. If we must heat a liquid to convert it to gas, then we must do the opposite for gas to convert to liquid. By removing energy, in other words, by cooling the liquid. Once cooled, the kinetic energy decreases, results in slower moving molecules. Hence, less molecule will possess sufficient kinetic energy to overcome the intermolecular forces. They end up gets closer, hence forms stronger intermolecular forces and return to liquid molecules. Now let's look at the factors affecting rate of vaporization. Vaporization is directly proportional to temperature. As the temperature rises, the kinetic energy of molecule also increases. As a result, the force of attraction reduces. Hence, with an increase in temperature, the rate of vaporization increases. With the increase in surface area, the rate of vaporization also increases as more number of particles is exposed to the change in temperature. High temperature and large surface area will cause the strength of intermolecular forces to become weaker and end up with high vaporization rate. Vapor pressure is a measure of the tendency of a material to change its states from liquid to gas when the temperature increases. It indicates the rate of evaporation of liquid. It is also closely related to the tendency of particles to escape from liquid state. As the temperature of a liquid substance increases, the molecule's kinetic energy also increases. Thus, the number of molecules transitioning into a vapor also increases, and thereby increasing the vapor pressure of the liquid. In relation to high temperature, strength of intermolecular forces will decrease as it is much easier for liquid molecule to escape from liquid state to vapor state. Hence, the vapor pressure is high. Boiling point of a liquid is affected by two factors. First, the boiling point of a liquid is directly affected by atmospheric pressure. This is the pressure exerted by the weight of the air molecules above the liquid. When atmospheric pressure is lower, such as at higher altitude, it takes less energy to bring the water to the boiling point. Less energy means less heat, which means water will boil at a lower temperature at a higher altitude. Next factor is intermolecular forces. As we have learned in chapter 4, weaker intermolecular forces means less energy needed to overcome the forces. Hence, this will reflect on its boiling point to be lower as well. In short, liquid that have weaker intermolecular forces will have higher vapor pressure and lower boiling point. That's all for subtopic 5.2 liquid. Thank you for your attention.